Injuries, 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 man. The downfall of any potential good career. Let's go over a prospect today that I feel is one of the most underrated in the entire NHL today, and it all has to do with injuries, and potentially the idea of him being pretty small. So, let's go over to the city of brotherly love and talk about some Philadelphia Flyers news that's actually pretty positive, or negative if you want to spin it that way because there definitely is a negative twist to this entire thing, and go over a guy that I've been chronicling ever since the 2019 draft as a potential steal. Bobby Brink. Now, Bobby Brink is a name that first and foremost is really cool. Bobby Brink, yeah, the BB's over there. It's actually one of many alliteration names that we saw in the 2019 draft, alongside of guys like Capo Caco, Bowen Byram, Cole Caulfield, Patrick Pistola, Caden Korzak. There were quite a few alliteration names in the 2019 draft, and Bobby Brink just happened to be one of them. He is, at the time of recording this audio, a 21-year-old forward, 5'9", 163 as a right-handed guy, and in his draft season in 2018-19, he went out there for the Sioux City Musketeers, getting over a point per game, 68 points in 43 games played. He also suited up for five games with the NTDP, as he made the U18 squad for the Worlds, getting six points in five games in that showcase. He was named in 2018-19 the best forward of the USHL, and he was on the first All-Star team. Here's a scouting report on Dauber prospects from the time. After feasting on the USHL competition this season, Brink was the lone non-NTDP addition to the American squad at the World Under-18s. He's looked dangerous alongside a Boldy and Turcotte at even strength. Brink finds soft spaces and makes the opposition pay in a hurry. He can read the play quicker than most and boasts the vision and release to act as a dual threat. He has an elite brain. On the flip side, he owns an ugly stride that lacks quickness or impressive top-end speed. He'll need to place immense focus on that skill, or he risks risks falling behind when he levels up to the pro ranks. He's off to the University of Denver in the fall. Here are the other scouting reports that are available on Elite Prospects talking about Brink. He's not a great skater, but Brink still brings an intriguing offensive skill set. His hockey sense is impressive. He's a gifted playmaker and can find the back of the net too. He tries to compensate his skating with great compete levels. Here's what E.P. Rinkside said in 2019. He sees the ice at an exceptionally high level. He attacks the soft parts of the offensive zone, putting himself in good spots to score. HockeyProspect.com said this, Much like a chess player manipulates his pieces to set up traps for his opponent, Brink does the same with his deception. Crafty with the puck, he always has his head up and uses his teammates well offensively, Future Consideration said. McKean's also said this, when he keeps his feet working, he shows his vision for line mates and has the ability to hit them with well-timed passes both short and long. Now, for Brink in his draft season, he was so good at creating offense, and you could just see that on the ice, he had a way of seeing the game unfold that really allowed him to play the game one or two steps ahead of the opponent. He could play make, he could dangle, he could shoot, he could score, he could do it all. And as a result, he was a guy that I kind of said, if he goes somewhere in the top 15, like, honestly, I could understand that projection there. Sure, the skating needs work. The stride needs work. The overall mobility needs work. He's agile with his pivots, but he's not quick. He can deceive players when he spins around left and right, but he's not really mobile. As a result, you had draft rankings that range from 15th overall with elite prospects to 37th overall with future considerations. TSN and Bob McKenzie had him at a first-round pick status at 26th overall, but he ultimately went 34th to the Flyers at the start of the second round. Ever since Bobby Brink was drafted, though, he had shown off as a pretty good University of Denver forward. He started off his collegiate career getting 24 points in 28 games played, and then he had 11 points in 15 games a season after that. This most previous season, though, saw Bobby Brink absolutely explode in the NCAA, getting 57 points in 41 games, 14 goals, 43 assists, he was over an assist a game for crying out loud, and he won these awards because of it. He was part of the first all-star team for the entire NCAA, he also won the NCAA championship, he was part of the first all-star team in the NCHC, he was the NCHC's Forward of the Year and the Player of the Year, he had the most assists and the most points in the entire collegiate system, and he was on the first All-American team in the NCAA on the West. He also was a finalist for the Hobie Baker, but he didn't end up winning that award. And so for Bobby Brink in this most recent season, the guy absolutely went out there and exploded on the collegiate scene. He signed his contract with the Flyers and then played 10 games with them. He had four assists in those 10 games, and that's pretty good. But things really took a turn for the worst when he ended up needing to get hip surgery. 
he's going to be out for about five months. Here's a tweet from Charlie O'Connor. The Flyers announced on July 26th that Bobby Brink underwent hip surgery to repair a torn labrum in his left hip. It's what kept him out of development camp. They expect him to be back in five months, which obviously knocks him out for the start of the 22-23 season. Now, we had already made a video talking about Ryan Ellis and the injury concerns with him and the Philadelphia Flyers, but Bobby Brink is kind of going through a similar sort of pattern with the injuries and the non-availability and how much that sucks for Flyers fans that had been really waiting to see this guy perform at the NHL level. And so even though he is 5'9", even though he isn't really the guy that was supposed to be the cream of the crop, he's not the fastest, he's not the biggest, he went in the second round, Bobby Brink still has an incredible prospect profile that I definitely do think you need to be paying attention to if you're looking at any prospects or looking at fantasy or whatever like that, because this is a guy that I think can be the absolute real deal. Here are the Dauber reports from this season on Brink. The Flyers received a brief look at what they have in Brink after signing him to his entry-level deal. Finishing up his junior season at Denver as national champion and Hobie Baker finalist, Brink played 10 games of Philadelphia, recording four assists. Although he looked competent, playing for a young group, struggling to grab any hope from a lost season, Brink seems best suited to start next year with Lehigh Valley. Of course, Brink's likelihood of making the NHL roster hinges on the direction management decides to go with the franchise. If they stick to an aggressive retool mentality, Brink's potential spot may be taken by someone with a more dense NHL resume. Predicting a midseason call-up is far from out of the question, especially with Philadelphia's injury history, John Gove writes. And then, two months later, he writes that Brink underwent surgery to repair a torn labrum. Originally expected to compete for a Flyers roster spot this season, he is expected to miss approximately five months. Once Brink is ready to return to the ice, he'll probably need a significant stint in the AHL with Lehigh Valley before receiving an opportunity with the Flyers themselves. And so for Brink... At this point, it kind of all just comes down to waiting, waiting until he's fully healthy to come back and suit up and then play in the AHL, where he'll likely do pretty well. I mean, there's no real reason to believe that Bobby Brink is going to have a tough time scoring against AHL competition. He was already the best player in the NCAA when it comes to point production, and he was scoring at a 30-something point pace in his limited NHL time. So at the end of the day, Bobby Brink, especially as a guy who recently turned 21, still has a high ceiling, and I definitely do think that he is more on the more vulnerable side of being boom or bust, because if he hits and he translates in the NHL with his point production, his offensive IQ, his creativity, and his ability to read plays, then this guy could be amazing. But if he's really held back by his lack of foot speed and the size, I definitely do see a world where Bobby Brink can become just a really good AHL player who can produce a whole bunch of points, point per game, etc, etc, but who isn't really able to get it all together at the top pro men's league. It really depends on where they go with his development, but so far he's been trending pretty well. So I definitely do want to give Bobby Brink the benefit of the doubt with his development and with his injury history because he has not been the healthiest over the past few years, so that definitely leaves some room for concern here, but at the end of the day, Bobby Brink still is a prospect that I feel you should be thinking about a lot more when it comes to young guys that could potentially, I don't know, contend for a Calder spot, if not actually win the trophy if he translates properly. And besides, with Philadelphia being the team that they are, they're a younger team that definitely is going down that retooling kind of path. They could probably use somebody who is cheap, who is on his entry-level deal, and who can produce some offense at a pretty good middle six power play second unit kind of rate. If Bobby Brink goes out there and maxes out to everything he's capable of doing in his prime, I honestly could see a guy that gets 60-70 points on a season just with his offensive playmaking alone. If he improves his foot speed, that could jack up even higher to 70 or 80 points. So, there are a multitude of reasons as to why I thought Brink could have been a top 15 talent in the 2019 NHL draft, but the Flyers ended up snagging him in the second round, so good for you guys. You also got Cam York in that draft too, so York and Brink, not to mention Ronnie Adderd, hey, it's a pretty good pairing of young guys they have in the system. But talk to the comments either way all your thoughts about Bobby Brink, the way the Philadelphia Flyers have been developing him, and where he projects in the next few years with this team. How well do you think he's going to be able to play for the Philadelphia Flyers, and how many points does he get in his prime? Heck, how many points does he get next season, assuming he plays a limited stint with them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.